The Frighteners was Michael J. Fox's last leading role on film since he focused on doing the show Spin City from 1996 to 2000. In his 2002 memoir, Lucky Man, back in the early 90s, his doctor said that he would have 10 years left to do acting, which resulted in his semi-retirement in 2000. Anyways, that was some health background on Fox since this film was a decent way to end his leading man film career. The Frighteners revolves around the mysterious heart attack deaths occurring in a coastal California town, despite the fact that the film was shot in New Zealand. The town is also marred by a Charles Starkweather wannabe killer, John Charles Bartlett, played by Jake Busey, who committed 12 murders a long time ago with his lady accomplice, Patricia Ann Bradley, played by Dee Wallace Stone, who is also Elliot's mother in E.T. He was executed by electric chair back then, but his girlfriend Patricia is serving a life sentence under house arrest with her mother for the last five years. It's unclear whether Patricia or her mother is crazy at the beginning of the film, but it becomes resolved later on. Michael J. Fox is psychic investigator Frank Bannister, and he's the town scam artist, since hardly anyone thinks he can really sense and clean up ghosts. The film leads the audience into being sympathetic to Frank because we're the only ones who can see what he sees. He actually sees ghosts and interacts with them and vice versa, and a few of them help him out with his psychic investigation business. They are Cyrus, a 70s ghost, Stuart, a nerd, and the gun-slinging judge, as well as a pet, which is a ghost dog. I didn't like Cyrus that much because the 70s black man stereotype was played up too much and it appeared forced instead of being smooth. Stuart was endearing, and I'm glad he wasn't overused. Although the judge has a gag in the film that's immature and ridiculous, he adds a little heart to the movie by telling Frank that his business and way of life is hurting him. He's like an old wise man since he's the oldest ghost in the film. Dr. Lucy Linsky, played by Trini Alvarado and Frank Bannister, were one of the few tolerable characters of this film. It's Michael J. Fox. He can pull off charismatic and funny with ease since he's a quintessential wisecrack. In a film filled with mostly unknown faces, he's the anchor and he brings enough contrast to this town full of caricatures and one-dimensional characters. Alvarado's Linsky has enough depth to her as well, and I'm glad that she becomes a protagonist alongside Frank. However, you can't just have two strong actors and the rest be unbearable to watch. Lucy Linsky was married to Ray Linsky, who later dies from a mysterious heart attack, and I absolutely hated Ray. I know that we're not supposed to like him in the first place, but he's an exercise junkie caricature for crying out loud. He's cliched and annoying just like Cyrus, except Cyrus is a little bit more tolerable. Ray becomes a tiny bit more likable when he's a ghost since he's humbled by death just a little bit, but not by a whole lot. He's still a sap. There's also the antagonist. Milton Dammers, who's an FBI agent who specializes in cults and other strange paranormal things. He's crazy and unfit to be an agent, so that causes Frank problems when he's trying to figure out what's causing the heart attack deaths. He comes off as an unlikable person, but in a good way due to being an effective villain. His extreme nature and his insanity make sense, so it's fine that he's a caricature. I was reacting negatively to his actions, which is completely fine, since I was rooting for Bannister and Lucy. Patricia and Johnny were good in this movie, too, and that's all I'm going to say, since there are some twists to this film that I didn't see coming due to being occupied with this film's world and logic. The visual effects and CGI were decent for 1996, but now... They look dated. Don't expect Jurassic Park CGI, since that stuff is still top-notch for today. It's not as detailed as it could be, but it blends in well and looks convincing enough due to mixing CGI and practical effects and props. I like the CGI of the ghosts, since it's better quality than Return of the Jedi's Force Ghosts. Those looked a little blurry for the image quality back then, in 1983. The ghosts from the Frighteners look as real as any other human character in the movie, albeit having a blue spiritual 
ghost tint and a decomposing face. However, effects regarding the bulging and moving walls and floors don't look as good, and they remind me of something in between a PS1's and a PS2's graphics. It's cartoon-like. It doesn't blend in as well. Danny Elfman's score does a job by being eerie, and it would fit well during Halloween. Ironically, this movie was released in the middle of July 1996 instead of October of that year. This was one of the contributing reasons why it only made $29 million against a $26 million budget. Universal thought it was so good based on early footage that they thought it deserved a summer spot instead of an October release. As a result, it got ignored in the middle of summer. So yeah, I recommend giving this film a chance during Halloween season. Since it's still unique despite its shortcomings in the first act, The Frighteners has a great concept behind it, like for the ghost powers and logic, but the execution is lacking. The first 30 minutes are shaky and weak until Ray dies. That minor character left a bad taste in my mouth that lasted until the end of the film. He was loud, obnoxious, and a waste of space. Ham, Cyrus, and Dammers nearly push this film into silly Scooby-Doo territory. The strengths of this movie are Michael J. Fox's and Trini Alvarado's performances as Frank Bannister and Lucy Linsky, as well as the paranormal concepts and powers of the film and the twists and turns that happen along the way. I wasn't expecting a few things that were revealed in this movie. The weaknesses are a slow start, lacking execution, and... Caricatures that are a bit too exaggerated and were annoying and not believable at all as a result. The Frighteners could definitely be remade into something with more seriousness to avoid Scooby-Doo territory. Since I enjoyed the concept of the ghost powers and laws, so here I pose the question. What movie do you think had a great idea but had lacking execution? Feel free to comment below and I... Brenna Uetta, we'll see you later.